All right, part two to this video. Now it's time to work on the sitting unit. I got that loose. That took about four hours to get that plug, you know, out of there. In hindsight, it doesn't even matter if I use penetrating fluid, oil, you name it. It wasn't going to come out unless it was with an easy out. It's going to strip. It's a it's a hex head plug, and it got per uh, it got perfectly machined round. This is so tightly in there. So I drilled it out, and I got that easy out in there. And by the grace of God, it got loose. So that one that one this is a win. It's it's loose now. It's just holding in there. So now I'm gonna back it out. And start fitting a bunch of you know I got galvanized steel NPT fittings or NTP it's, it's it is what it is that's what I got to mess around with I got enough to do with three different directions depending on how I can make it it's, it's either gonna go out and up that's one or just out in general that'll be two or out and you know closer or out and a 45 degree bend so I got like three or four different options Whichever one works, I'm going to go with it. So I'll, I'll get back to you when I figure out how to get this uh, hooked up. I'll take it from there. Alright, this is where I'm at right now. I got it. It all fit in pretty good. Uh, right there, that's where the new location for the factory setting it will be. It's closer to the oil pump. We'll get more of an accurate reading. That's where the gauge will connect into. It's all nicely uh, fitted in. This is the gauge that I'm going to use. Goes as low as 10 up to 100, so... I'll eventually uh, use a uh, copper line, but for now I'll just work with what this gauge came with. It is a bit close to the headers, I know, but I'm going to route it coming from straight down, not, a, not following the length of the block. So I'm thinking the line's just going to go uh, following that pattern and head straight down. And the fittings I got left, I'll use to cap off the back end. Overall, it's coming together. One step closer of getting this car figured out. All the while, it's leaking a tremendous amount of power steering fluid. Not from that, it's from the steering box, which in these Fords. You can see that down there. It's in the back. Never had that problem before, so... Uh, it's just one more thing I'm going to tackle next year. Put some cat litter or cardboard underneath the car. For the time being, it still drives fine. Power steering isn't affected yet, but got to get that done sooner or later. Right now, I'm going to get this gauge hooked up. We'll take it from there. It's all coming together very nicely so far. Alright, everything's hooked up now. The gauge just hooked up right here, just to monitor it before I move it inside the car. I'm going to read it right in the engine bay. Elongated that wire, just use some blue wire laying around, it's got a zip tie on it together. Uh, it's kind of crude how I capped in the back, it's the only piece of uh, fittings I had laying around. It's about a four or six inch long pipe with a cap. It's in there tight. Doesn't matter. It's capped off. Alright. That should be all good. Prop this up somewhere. That works. Um, now it's just ready to fire it up. So I'll take it from there. All right, now we're gonna fire this thing up. I'm 
Not a bad looking interior. Go tour of that later. Ignition cylinder is really stiff. I got an electrical tape over there because the brake light's on. It has brakes, but for some reason it stays on, so it's more troubleshooting for that problem later on. Oh yeah, I put dual exhaust on it, so it sounds very gnarly the way I like it. Do a video of that later on, showing that off. I haven't started in a while. Looks like we got a leak somewhere when the fittings isn't tight enough. But pressure, it worked. It's just got to get it tightened up. That hissing is a vacuum. Um, hmm. Not sure where that leak's coming from. I'm just more impressed that the gauge worked. So, it's all hooked up all right. I'm gonna go troubleshoot where that leak is and I'll get back to you on that. Okay, I figured out I figured out the problem. Um this wasn't tight enough. Uh same with that. This wasn't tight enough. I thought it was, but it needed a few more turns. It's just enough for it to leak out, drip a few. They're good and tight now. Wiped that off the axis with some paper towel, just monitor it. Try this again. Uh, I'm thinking, look at the bottom corner piece. It's got a wheel on it, but I'm sure it's just from leaking on top down to the bottom. Thought those ends are, thought the bottom ends leaking, it really secured. And that, that looks good. Yeah, let's give this a second try. I don't think it's leaking anymore. Yeah, I think that took care of it. I'm gonna let it warm up and let the idle kick down and see how it handles when it's all up to operating temperature. We'll take it from there. I figured I'd do a shot from the outside while it's idling. It kicked down, so now it's at around 500-600 RPMs. Show off the exhaust a little bit. Still cold. I've been running for like three minutes. I don't have a temp gauge hooked up yet, so I'm just gonna go by feel on the upper radiator hose. 
when that gets warm, that means the thermostat opened up, so I'll give it like five minutes, 10 minutes after that. Should be pretty close to operating temperature, and it's like 40 degrees today. So I'll get back to you later on. I'm gonna figure out more, figure out more about this car and what, what it's all doing. All right, now it's up to operating temperature. What was it, like 60, 80 PSI right off the bat? And it's in a park, obviously. A little bit over 20 PSI. Right around 22, 23 PSI. Car has been running for about 20 minutes. So it's around 25 PSI at idle and just under 20 PSI when it's in gear. A lot higher than I thought it would be. Now the engine light doesn't come on. That could have been indicative of a lot of reasons. I mean the oil sending unit from the original one was just crap and it was leaking so a lot of variables with that. But it's all hooked up, the wires are crimped on. It's all tied into the system, so the engine light's still active. It's just not on because it's got significant oil pressure. Remember my old theory that the motor was never in any danger. It's just the oil sending unit was crap and it was furthest away from the oil pump. So it's misreading a lot. And it looks like it's fine. It's got oil pressure and it's running pretty good. Now it's just a matter of getting the valve covers off and and getting that all straightened out. It is getting kind of smoky in here. That's just because uh, the valve covers are leaking, so they smoke a little. So it's kind of hazy in here. Looks kind of like a. If it doesn't look like one, it definitely smells like a bingo hall in here. not leaking at the fittings either. All in all, I'd say this was a success. Now it's just to clean all this stuff up and move on to the next thing to do. There's plenty more to do this car. Get back to you guys later. This, this is turning out to be a pretty good motor the more I dig into it, which is good. I'll also do a compression check on it as well. Do everything I can to figure out what this motor's got, so I'll get back to you guys later on.